Good morning. Welcome to Pastors United. Uh, we come this morning to, uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm uh, the pastor of New Direction Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Sylvester Jones. We have a host of pastors here that's on the panel, and they will introduce themselves. I am Pastor Gregory Caffey of the Refuge Missionary Baptist Church, located at 8058 South Kimbar. I am Pastor Kenneth T. Marshall of the Greater Divine Love Missionary Baptist Church, located at 45 East 71st Street. Amen. At this time, Pastor Marshall will give us a uh, prayer. Scripture. A scripture, sorry. Our scripture shall be coming from out of Providence, the uh, 22nd chapter. Verse 1 through 6. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor, rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. The prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple way pass on and are punished. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. He that keepeth his soul shall be far from them. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart <coughs> from it. I've just read for you verses 1 through 6 of chapter 22 of the book of Proverbs. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearer of his word. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these, your people. We thank you for the form that you have given us today. And we pray right now that something will be said through the moderators and also through the young folk, that people will understand and realize that you are still God and you are still in control. Amen. Enlighten us today, God, as we have an exchangement of ideas. Enlighten us in your word. Enlighten us to your word, to your will, and to your way. In your darling son Jesus' name we pray it is so, and so it is. Amen. 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 Good morning and welcome to Pastors United. Today we're going to continue on with our Pastors United Youth Forum and some of our topics of discussion that's already, that we have already covered uh, was uh, the meaning of the demonic spirits that empower all other demonic spirits. One is called insecurity and the other one is called inferiority. And as we learned from our last segment, that insecurity simply means the state of not being secure, not confident, not being firm within yourself. Uh, also, uh, the meaning of inferiority, we have come to understand that it means the state of feeling lower in position, statue, or value. And some of our spiritual, I'm sorry, our scriptural proof were found in the book of Genesis, the third chapter, verses 1 through 6. And it tells of Satan's first demonic influence on woman and man. In our topic of discussion, we have our youth panel today, and they're going to be sharing with us some of their thoughts. These thoughts uh, have not been rehearsed. Uh, they have not uh, gone over them uh, to the point where they're uh, practiced. We want them to be open. We want them to be honest uh, with us as we go into this discussion and have an exchangement of ideas uh, with our youth. We're going to continue on now in our topics of discussion, and we're going to talk about some of the statistics among our youth today. And some of the statistics uh, that have shown, have, have, have um, have shown us that more young people are losing hope. Uh, they're staying away from the faith. Uh, another statistic said that uh, suicidal attempts are at an all-time high among our young people. Uh, uh, there was another one uh, which said that homosexuality and lesbianism are openly practiced 
and it's readily accepted not just among the adults but also uh, the youth community as well. There's one more uh, I'd like to hone in on and it, there was a statistic given and it, the, the a question was asked, uh, who would you rather live with, friends or family? Most of the youth said, and I quote, I would rather live with friends and acquaintances than live with my own family. And so in our panel of discussions, I'm going to start uh, with Pastor Marshall, and then we're going to turn it over to our young people and get their point of view. And we're going to ask them to be open and honest with us. Is that okay? Amen. Pastor Marshall. Amen. Um, Pastor Kaffee had just gave us the statistics, and what I wanted to uh, ask the question of some of the young folks, especially on number four, when it was talking about youth who would rather stay with their uh, friends versus their own family. Um, why would someone want to be separate from their own households and stay with someone else versus their own family? Any of you can take it. Is it because some, some youth, their, their families are too rigid, too stern, and they see more freedom in their friends' households? Or is it because um, there may be a lack in their home in terms of maybe, you know, people supporting them spiritually as well as with their physical needs, and so therefore they see that their friends have more what, 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 what is it? What, why would you want to, someone want to? I'm not saying you guys, but why would someone want to stay with their friends versus staying in their own households? Anyone can take it. Okay, we can have a, we're going to have a mic over. Hi, I'm Kennedy Marshall. I go to Greater Divine Love Missionary Baptist Church. And the question was asked, why would most youth rather live with their friends than their family? Oftentimes, um, some youth go through things with their family and life with their friends makes things feel better. So they oftentimes feel that if they live with their friend, that they won't have to be under as much stress. They won't have to deal with things going on around them and their family, because sometimes family members are not always, um, you can't choose your family members, put it that way. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris from Refuge Ministry, Ministry Baptist Church. Um, the question was asked, why do you rather live with your family, your friends than your family? Um, with some people, it's the freedom. Some people, is the comfortability. Um, some family members don't make you comfortable where you're living at. They constantly yell or they're on you um, about different things. Um, the freedom, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, and sometimes your friends, um, parents, <coughs> do more for you than your own family. Um, so that's what it's pretty much, pretty much it is. Well, my name is Janaya Little, and I go to Refuge Missionary Baptist Church. I believe that <clears throat> I really believe that some people will rather live with their friends than their family because you see, it seems like you get along better with your friends' family than your actual family. But that's until you live with them. <laughs> Thank you, man. My name is Stephon Nixon. I go to Refuge Baptist Church. And the question was, why would you want to stay with your friends than your family? I want to stay with my friends because, like, it's like they, my family, they be, like, hollering at me. And the, uh, like, they, my friends, they probably, like, provide for me. They give me money and stuff. Sometimes I'm trying to give me money, but my friends give me, like, they give me anything I want. 
and that's why I would really like to stay with my friends. Mm -hmm. Money been thing, you gotta go to refuge missionary back to church, man. The question is asked, why do people want to stay with their friends than their own family? I think people want to stay with their friends because, like, they get more freedom and stuff, and then, like, it's stress. It's not stressful with their friends and their family. My name is Antoine from Refuge Mission and Barber Church. I think, like, kids want to live with their friends because they, like, they don't have to do no chores. Like, they can just <laughs> run free. <laughs> As I was saying, I don't think that necessarily having so much freedom in one's friend's house is necessarily conducive to a good raising. I believe that when you're going to your friend's house, you're there as a visitor. You're there as a guest. That's why they're not as hard on you, because you are a guest in that house. But I believe that the person who's trying to provide for you the best they can to give you the best raising, rearing, in terms of education, in terms of <laughs> obedience and chores to do, because everyone has to work. And in terms of having you get in a relationship with your God, that's the person that's showing you love. And I'm not saying that every situation is the same. Sometimes there are difficulties in our households that we're dealing with. But I do believe that a lot of times that children want to go and live with friends or stay with friends a lot because they can avoid the, the disciplines and, and the things that the parent would give them. Uh, my sister has a strong statement. She said a child without discipline is actually a miserable child. Because you, when you don't have any discipline and there's no rules, you're not teaching them real reality. And then when they reach a certain age, they think their rules don't count. But rules do count, and that's why we have so many people getting locked up and getting themselves in trouble because they, they, they were raised without rules. You've got to be raised with rules because there are rules. There are rules, and we have to teach that there are rules. Okay? Amen. And that's my statement. Amen. You know, to, to what you were saying, Pastor. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Pastor Marshall, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly that, uh, you know, sometimes kids like to just escape, uh, escape the reality of discipline. However, there you must understand too as well, in a society such as ours, uh, there is a spirit of dysfunctionality in the home. That's right. And some children, uh, they literally want to get away. You ever saw that commercial said, want to get away? Well, sometimes our children find themselves in those dysfunctional situations at home, whereas mommy and daddy's fussing and cussing and, and brother is smoking and they're fighting and they're being accused of taking stuff they didn't take. The spirit of dysfunctionality is in running rampant in the family, so the young people, they take the brunt of it. So when they go to a friend's house, the friend says, hey, come sit down, let's watch TV, let's chill. That's freedom to some of them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because uh, when you're at home and you're dealing with a lot of dysfunctional uh, 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 parents and, and, and siblings, you, know, you want to get away. So I agree that they do want a certain amount of freedom. And they need to understand that discipline is what's going to take them far in life. Then some of them are in such a, a hellish situation that they want to get away. They, they feel they must get away. In the friend's house or an acquaintance's house, it's their outlet. That's right. That's right. Do you I all agree? agree? I agree. Yes. 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 Go ahead. I agree to it. Um, but I agree, um, but what I will say, um, when you go stay at a friend's house, at times, sometimes at your friend's house, you may, like, you may want to get closer to God. And when you're at your friend's house, they may be more spiritual um, there than it is at your house. So when you're at your friend's house, they may say, okay, come on, let's go to church. 
and let's praise God. Let's pray in my house. When you're going through something, you may have that friend to say, come on, let's sit down and pray. They mother or father may, you know, push you more into praying and asking God and seeking God more and more. Um, and at your house, you may not get that. Your family may not um, believe in God like, like you may do or like your friends do. So you have to... Um, you have to look at those different things um, with that um, if you're living with your friends. Um, and then also, like sometimes your <coughs> friends, family may push you to do better than some of your family. Because some of your family will knock you down when your friends and um, their parents and loved ones may push you to that next level to go in life. So that's what I would say. Would you say, would you say that, that that can go both ways? Just like you can have a friend whose household does have that, that, that love of God and that push to, to do the best and be the best you can. And then you could have a friend's household that maybe not, not, not doing that. Maybe they have freedoms other ways where they can hit the street in the morning and they don't have to come back into the night. <laughs> and nobody says nothing to them. And to you, that might be freedom because in your household and in a lot, it can go both ways, right? Yeah. I, I'm just asking you guys. It can right. go both ways. And go you both can look ways. at that situation and say, you know what? Man, that ain't good either. Right. Nobody asked about us. Nobody looking for us. And if I was at home, ain't nowhere in the world my moms would go for it, right? You're right. I, I mean, I'm asking because it can go right. both, both ways. ways. When I was coming up, I had a, a buddy whose mom... She'd be on the side of the garage smoking reefer, you know? And we were looking, she didn't hide it from us. This is a barbecue, and she right there, lighting up. So, and we were like, it would never have happened in my mom and dad no how. But then there was some guys who was with, they was like, man, his mom is cool. And I'm like, no, his mom, that ain't what mom's supposed to be doing, right? You know, in my mind. But that's how it was. And some people was drawn to his house because of those freedoms like that. And, but as a result, my buddy ended up on drugs, sold drugs, on drugs, and dead. Mm -hmm. See? So I'm just saying, some freedoms and things that we consider to be freedoms, it's not freedoms, it's actually a sale. Amen. Um, Amen. I was listening to the kids and I listened to the response. And I, I concur with everything that's been said. Except for when I'm looking at what the children are saying about getting away from home because nobody said that the parents were uh, dysfunctional. It seemed like the, all the children trying to get away from home because they want freedom to do what they want to do. And uh, I never will forget, uh, here the Lord gave me a message once that don't let your freedom get you in trouble. Because uh, I believe a home without discipline was a dysfunctional home. Amen. You have to have discipline in the home. Scripture even said, what, spare the rod, spoil the child. That's right. um, even we go in the, in the text, you know, and, uh, the Lord tells us to train up a child. I, I don't know if the young people understand what the word train means. Well, I can just use you for, I, I use my own self as an example. I didn't want to do right. I didn't want to follow instructions. But when my grandmother got through with me, she trained me. And sometimes that training had to come with a, a switch or a strap. That means train means make. It means make. And then if you're going to grow up in, a, in order to be, you know, if you're living in a home where your home has structure, then your home got rules. They have That's rules. Right. That's right. You cannot grow up in a household where they have right. no rules. <laughs> Let me just throw this at the, at the children. Okay, the friend's house that the children go, through, go to, do they have rules? Do their parents have rules? Then it's no difference. And I do believe that a lot of times uh, you, you run to your uh, a friend's house and if there's no rules there, you're still going to wind up somewhere in life. Everywhere, there are rules. God gave rules. And from the beginning, he gave rules. If you go in the grocery store, 
their rules. You stand in line till you get waiting on. You go in the bank, even though it's your money back there. You gotta stand in line till you get waiting on. And in life, everywhere you go, there are rules. Uh, one young lady told me, she said, well, she just got her permit. Well, if you got a permit, the first thing they start teaching you is rules. Rules. You know, and we cannot grow up in a society. Can you imagine living in a society without rules? No. Mm. Without rules? So we have to have rules. And rules is what, what, what structure you to become the men and women that God will want you to be. Amen. Well said, Pastor Jones. Well said. Uh, let's move. Let's move along to another uh, vital statistics uh, that uh, among that was given among the young folk, our youth of society. The question was asked, uh, and there was the foremost given reasons to this question. But the question was asked: uh, Why don't you want to go to church? Uh, some of the um, um, question, some of the answers that were given were uh, interesting. Um, some of them said, uh, I don't want to go to church because church is non-relatable to me. Uh, it's too boring and there are no activities. Uh, others said, the preacher, he preaches above my head. Uh, he talks at me and not to me. Um, some said, I feel shut out, and I believe there are just too many cliques in the church. I didn't say that. The young people said that. <laughs> um, some said, there are no other youths there for me to relate to, therefore I feel lost. I, I, want, I would like to ask our youth panel, um, and be open and honest uh, with us on these answers. Um, why don't you want to go to church? I don't want to go to church because uh, the preacher, he's preaching wrong, and, <laughs> and too many long services. That's all. Too many long services. Well, it don't really make me want to come to church. Like, sometimes I don't understand the words that the pastor is saying. And like, that's it. Well, sometimes I have a, I have a problem getting up early, so that's the reason I come to church. Yeah, um, yeah like she said, sometimes I have a problem getting up early because I don't like getting up early, and sometimes I know the preacher be preaching. One minute, I get it then, like, he say something, I'm like, I don't get it. Just, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please keep in mind that these young folk are being open and honest. Uh, they're not saying that they don't want to be a part of, uh, of God's program. They're saying uh, they're giving us answers to what they see as children, as young folk, or uh, what they believe is wrong with uh, the church as to why they're not as interested as they should be. That's right. Okay. Young lady? Um, sometimes I don't want to go to church because oftentimes... Um, at certain churches, I feel as if their worship is kind of different from mm -hmm. the way I worship. Mm -hmm. And I may not feel comfortable in certain environments. And then, also, um, sometimes you get those long-winded preachers that go on <laughs> and on and on. And, I mean, it's fine for you to repeat yourself so that you may get, you know, so people can get the gist of what you're saying. But if you're just doing it over and over and over, it gets tiring to a point. And um, that's about it. Um, I have to agree with you. I must have to agree with you. But also, like, um, when you go to different churches or you go to church, you may want to praise and worship God one way, and then the church is stuck in that way way that they have been worshiping God for a while. 
So like you have to, the church has to try to um, accommodate the young and the older members. Um, and when you accommodate them, you'll find that the church may grow more than just be at a standstill. And sometimes when you go to different churches or go to church, the, these two people, may, me and him may sit and talk, and then them two over there may think we're talking about them, but we may not be. We may be talking about something else, about God, or something, you know, outside of church, or whatever the case may be. Um, and people may feel, start fe feeling like left out, or feeling like the church is segregated um, to a degree. So that's all I have to say. Um, some young people that I talk to, like my friends and, and things, they tell me that they don't like to go to church because <coughs> at church they say they feel as if they're the most judged. They get judged by how they look and and they want to generalize them as being one of the bad kids, you know, on the streets and doing things like that. So a lot of times they say when they come in, all eyes are on them. And then everybody's watching everything that they do. And the ushers are coming and checking and messing with them just to, you know, I guess, see what they're doing. But they say in actuality, they just come to hear the word like everybody else. So instead of doing that, a lot of them say they watch TV, the church TV, 30 minutes, and they out the door instead of coming to real church. Um. I have one thing to say on um, on what she was just talking about with some of the uh, people that like to come to church or would like to come to church. Um, and they say that the ushers, not all ushers um, bother you, but um, they just want to make sure that you're feeling comfortable uh, with being there and making sure that you're um, all right um, with far as worshiping God, um, and if you need something that they can try to help you with. Um, so that's the gist of um, with the ushers. I had a, a comment that I wanted to make uh, about the children being in church. I want to say this. If you don't come, you can't see change come in the church. It's not going to change if you're not there. Mm -hmm. If you're there, they're there to mentor you and it's okay to make change, but first, you must learn what's decent and in order. Mm -hmm. We can't be a part of the praise team, and you're standing up there and we see your underwear. And right. they won't work. I know they, wanna, they say they want to come, but coming as you are doesn't mean necessarily you're a tired. Coming as you are, God's talking about your heart. Mm -hmm. He wants your heart. You can't sing in the praise team, and, and, and I'm looking at a 15-year-old girl's bus line. That's not that's not in order. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or I'm looking at a young man's blue, green, purple underwear because he's <laughs> sagging in, in church. He has to pull his pants up. You see what I'm saying? And put a belt on so we don't see that. Mm -hmm. She's got to put a blouse on that's mm -hmm. appropriate. And then we can focus on the words that are being expressed and the work <coughs> that's being expressed versus being focused on what they're wearing. See, if you kill that appearance, we're more likely to hear. See, because you gotta understand, it's a different generation or genre from the one that you're, you're coming from. Mm -hmm. And that's not, still not gonna be appropriate in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's still God's house. It's not our house, it's God's house. In terms of the preaching, being over your head, you need to use that as a stepping stone then to learn the word. And then if you have a relationship with your pastor or the preacher or the teacher, you tell them. You're kind of talking. See, because they'll see you're regular, you're coming, you're looking for something, and you tell them. Sometimes you're talking a little over my head, I ain't got you. And they listen, believe you me, they have no problem. No problem bringing it down. That's right. No problem. Because they are there for your best. They're not there to try to, they're trying to get the best out of you. I'm not, not here to, I'm not jumping on you guys. I'm just saying. Uh, as far as the young lady here to the right, 
I'm talking about the long-winded preacher, we'll work on it. <laughs> but you all understand later on too. When God give you something to say, you have a lot to say. You're gonna see it's gonna come. It's gonna come. Because you're gonna be the next generation of chosen for people. And you're gonna see the changes in, in the generations and, and how they're gonna come up behind you and you're gonna be like, look at them young folks. Uh -huh. Oh my God, they out of control. We gotta reach them. We gotta reach them. When, when we're doing things, it's not to hurt you. We're trying to reach you. You see what I'm saying? We're trying to help you. And so don't leave the church. Don't not come to church. Come to church. Amen. Get the mentoring and get some of the teaching from the older people as well as start to implement as you grow in grace and the knowledge of God. Start implementing some things that you think the church needs. Because it's not going to, we can't reach the needs if there's no help. The preachers, the teachers, and the pastors, and the few deacons, it's not enough for them. It's not enough for them to do. We need your help. We need you to be a part. We need you to stand up there and give the word of God. Some you'll be surprised how young folks can get this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to cut you off, Pastor. But one thing I will say is sometimes the preachers and in the church you have to make the the youth um, feel more welcome to um, participate. Because in, in some churches, there um, you can't, if you don't um, go from the, like the older members, um, they like to run it their way. And if you don't allow the young to help you or take their suggestions, then the church will never grow. I agree. And what I would think with some churches, maybe you all should start having like maybe a suggestion box, um, and then people put their suggestions in there, and then the pastor or whoever's in command um, read them and take heed to them. I, I would agree with the young man and what he's saying in terms of um, the older people sometimes don't want to move. But let me tell you what will, will make an older person respond to you when they see you're ready to learn from them. Mm -hmm. If they see you ready to learn, see because one, if you're learning from them, they're not afraid of what you might say when you get up there. Mm -hmm. They know what you're going to say because you've been taught. Right. It's just like with anything. Mm -hmm. A teacher doesn't select a young man for the spelling bee. Right. And, and, and he can't spell. She knows he can spell because he's already been learning from her and he's been taught. So when you come to church and the older people are watching you and they see that you're learning from them, they see you saying certain things inside of the Sunday school or whatever the classes, and they see you standing up and you giving testimony like you've been around for years and saying, I want to thank God for all that he's been doing for me and my family. Ooh, they, they're not afraid now. See, because it's their job to watch over this thing. Let me give you an example. The pastor is nothing more than the best man in the church. Did you know that? Jesus is the groom. The church is the bride. And the pastor is the best man. Did you know that? The best man's job is to make sure that the bride shows up at the wedding unsullied. You know what Southern mean? Dirty. <laughs> Unclean. If she show up in a dingy dress, that means the best man didn't do his job. Back in the old days, that's what the best man was for. He's supposed to make sure that the bride show up unsullied, clean, ready for the bride, for the groom. That's our job. And if that's our job over the church, we got to watch you and everyone in because we are all a part of the bride of Christ. So if we see that you're learning, we're not afraid of what you might say when you get up there. And there are some adults, believe it or not, not yes, just children. Thank right? you. There are some adults yes, that get up way out of order. Don't take it that we're just picking on children. Way out of order. Way out of order. And my God, believe you me, the pastor's sitting there like, oh my God. <laughs> Did he just say what I thought he said? <laughs> So it's not just you, it's them too. It's them too. They're like children. They're like children. So it's not we, but don't leave the church. You want to make a change in the church? Show up. 
That's right. Show up. That's right. And you can make all you can make a big change in the church and in yourself. Amen. That's right. That's right. Welcome back to our Pastors United Youth Forum. Our topics of discussion, we've been uh, talking about the statistics of the young, uh, the young folk regarding the church, uh, the youth of today. Uh, we covered uh, uh, some of the reasons why they uh, don't want to go to church. But on the flip side, there's a positive uh, uh, statistics that says uh, the church is growing by leaps and bounds uh, through the attendance of the young folk. And it's because they are uh, intrigued by the uh, attendance of other young folk. So I want to talk to the young folk today. We want to uh, pose a question to our youth panel here today. And I want to know why, uh, what are some of the positives that you find uh, in the church and why you uh, I like to be a part of the church. Young man? I would like to be, um, I mean, I would like to go to church because I can be in an activity like mommy, um, like paying, paying attention to what uh, the preacher is saying and just listening. I enjoy going to church because the different opportunities we opportunities they have for me. Um, I love dancing and it's either even better dancing for God and I like getting the word about God. Um, I like going to church. I have actually been going to church all my life. Um, so and I always been in the choir and I always feel the spirit when I sing. So my that's the reason why I like going to church is because I feel like God I'm singing and giving him praises. I feel that's the reason why I go. <clears throat> um, I enjoy going to church. Like he said, I've been in church my whole life. But um, I have responsibilities in the church too. So that plays a big part, especially when you know that it's other people counting on you to do things. That's your push. And then also, I have grown spiritually. And it has also helped me in the outside world. Um, with certain situations and things that I, I come to, and um, I, I enjoy the word, and yeah, it's different opportunities. And the church is your support system, they are a team. Like, when you get an accomplishment, it's not just your accomplishments, it's everybody who's been there for you, helped you, pushed you through it. And it's, it they're, they're your family, it's not just a place that you go. It's, it's a loving environment. You get the word. You get to see how everybody is doing. And they, they, they support you. They help you. They love you. Amen. Well, I like going to church. I can be in like activities and learn more about God. The reason I like going to church is because. I get the knowledge that I want to get, and since God gave me, like, the special stuff, like, he gave me stuff I could do. He taught me how to dance and stuff, so I should just use it in church. He taught me how to sing, so I like doing it in church and stuff. So how do you feel? How do you feel when you're expressing? Um, yourself in the church, when you're expressing your love for God and what you do, how, how does that make you feel? Uh, I feel good when I'm minded because I worship God and I dance for Him. And, and I love Him. Well, I'm thankful that God gave me the ability to worship and praise Him. And when I'm dancing, I feel like I, I'm reaching out to somebody and spreading His word to dance. Amen. 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 Um, when I'm 
dancing, it make me feel like I accomplished something in life and all that. Mm -hmm. And it's just relaxing. It feel good, make me feel good. When I'm dancing, it's just like, I can just let all my emotions go through my dance and like, just feel great. Um, when I sing, or when I direct the choir, or when I dance, I feel as if I have blessed somebody, and they probably needed it. They needed the song, or the song that I chose for the choir to sing. They needed that song, or the 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 emotion and the feeling that I put into my dancing. They needed that because they're going through, or they just needed it to know, you know, God is there. Um, Supposingly, suppose I walked up to you, and I was a total stranger, and I asked you, young folk, I said, uh, what are your thoughts on God? What do you feel, really, what are your thoughts on God? What do you think about God? What would you tell me? What would your answer be? My answer would be that um, he, he made me. try to get you to study the Word of God? Why do you think that they, they try and get you to study the Word of God for yourself? Not just only just doing it when you come to church on Sunday, but study it for yourself regularly. Um, because I, I think that they probably, they probably, back in their days when they were younger stuff, they probably was doing bad stuff then. God called them. He <laughs> showed them right. <laughs> well, just to elaborate on what he said, um, when 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 uh, the preachers um, try to get us to study, they want us to feel what they feel, which is the presence of the Lord. And if we don't study, then we won't know God like they know God. So we have to study so we can know God. And when we find God and know God, there won't be nothing nobody can tell you in this world about Him. Because you already know 
who he is, what he can do for you. And that's it. Oh, um, I think the past is the one that's to read the word and stuff because in life you will encounter a lot of people who will try to talk about, especially Christians, um, they will try to talk about your religion and try to show you things in the Bible and confuse you and trick you up. But if you if you know what the Bible says, if you know exactly what it says, and you've been taught, they can't they can't mess with you. You already know it's already known. And then um, my dad tells me that uh, one day the Bible will be taken from us, and you're gonna have to have it in your heart. So if you study it now and get it in your heart, you already have it. You don't need to well, you need to physically read it, but you you will have some things in your heart that you. You can live off of and, and continue to pray. Um, I think um, the pastors want us to study the Bible so that, like, you can become a pastor and they can visit your church and see what you know about the Bible. That's what's up. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm I think they want you to learn about God because you can have your own connection with Him, like they said. And, like, you can know the word for yourself. Amen. You just won't be hearing things. You have facts about it. You, like she said, you don't know the word. <laughs> That's, it. That's, it. That's, it. That's right. Praise Amen. Amen. That's right. Great. Uh, one more question. I know our time is uh, to our TV audience. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this as much as we are. Um, but I'd like to pose one more question, our last question to our young folk. Um, um, I'd like you to do me a favor. When I call these names, uh, raise your hand if you know who I'm talking about. Uh, if, you, if you've heard of this person or you know this person or you've read about this person or you've listened to this person, this uh, artist. Uh, Lil Wayne. Lil Twist. Rihanna. Kanye West. Gucci <laughs> Mane. Bow Wow. Better known as Brave, uh, Byron, right? Yeah. Nas, Jay Z, Lady Gaga, Wiz Khalifa, Waka Flocka, Ludacris, Nicki Minaj, Eminem, Dr. Dre, Miley Cyrus. <laughs> okay, lower your hands. Now, raise your hands if you know these people. T.D. Jakes, Saida Garrett, Paula White. Michael Jackson, <laughs> Tito Jackson, <laughs> Blanket, <laughs> The Winans, Vicky Winans, John P. Key. What does that tell me? That, um, what does that say to you? That younger kids focus on all the rap stuff and don't listen to other cultures, genres. That's, that's what that says to you? Mm -hmm. What does that say to you? It says to me that like kids, they need to focus on, on hip hop. They need to learn more on the gospel songs. And and you have to like learn them so you can try to sing them in church or something. <laughs> what does that say to you? That says that, um, you know, we need to learn more about gospel and, you know, the preacher and stuff instead of listening to this other thing, spam music, like that song. What does it say to you? Well, it says to me that, um, like, I'm a, I'm a fan of the, both. I listen to R&B and rap and gospel, but I mostly listen to gospel since I have um, trying to change my life over uh, more and more 
know each day with God. So I'm trying to be closer. So I, you know, focus more on the gospel than um, the hip hop and the R and B. So um, what you would do is you just have to pray to ask God more and more each day to give you that um, the word of wisdom to focus more on Him than the circle of music and circle of things. Amen. What is this idiot? Um, it says to me that um, our youth are more in the world than they are in their religion. And that we know more about the circular world than we do about the people in the, the uh, religious community as far as the preachers, I guess you would say, I only do about two out of the seven that you name. So that means for me, I need to start um, listening or watching or reading more Bibles from other preachers. What does that say to you, uh, Antoine? They need to stop turning up, turning up on their uh, rap music. They need to start turning up on their Christian music. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, the reason why I ask this question is because um, I just want the youth panel to know that whatever your constant intake is, that that's what you become. Um, so, and, and the reason why I did this was because there's such a big focus, you know, on artists that are uh, 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 secular, more so than the Christian artists. And, and I sometimes I see it almost creeping into the church. You know, y'all talk back to me. Uh, but the, I wanted to see where your focus was and what, what was uh, the constant intake. Now, I know sometimes when you listen to the media, and that, that's all they, they give you. You know, that, that's the constant intake you uh, receive when you're watching TV. Um, but I want you all to understand that whatever your constant intake is, that's what you'll become. Because I want to encourage you to realize that and to know that you have gates. You have an eye gate, you have an ear gate, and then you have a mouth gate. Okay? And you also, you, you, you also have a gate here on your heart. Mm -hmm. So whatever your constant intake is, if it's constantly in your eyes, if it's constantly in your ears, and if, if it's not the Word of God, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying 24-7 you should be in the Word of God, but be careful with your constant intake mm -hmm. because what goes in is what's going to come out. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Marshall, Pastor Jones, uh, as, we, as we close in this segment, um, I'll have you to uh, kind of expound on what I just said uh, briefly, and uh, we'll have our questions from the uh, youth panel, and uh, we'll uh, be finished. Um, in terms of what Pastor Caffey just said, I'll say this, that, that, that when you're constantly taking in something that is not necessarily giving God glory, but glorifying the things of the world, mm -hmm. uh, then... It, 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 it starts to become a part of actually who you are, even your character. You'll even find yourself uh, using the terms and the terminologies that they use because of the fact that that's constantly a part of your spirit. It's on the television screen. It's on the uh, it's on the, uh, on, the on, on our on our iTunes and our iPads and and our iPods and we're in our MP3 players. We're listening to a lot of negativity inside of this music, that we need to be very careful about what we're taking into our ear. Amen. Because sometimes, I'm gonna tell you half the time, the young folks, you hear the beat, but a lot of times you don't hear all of the words. <laughs> Kanye West said just not a <coughs> ago that he was Jesus. <laughs> That's right. And Jay-Z said that he was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why he calls himself Jehovah. <laughs> You know, using terms like what's what what's a god to a king? What's a king to a non-believer? Well, for us the church, there's but one king. Thank you. Jesus. That's it. But what's a king to a non-believer? He ain't even believer. He's trying to tell you. And we're not hearing him. 
people like him and Rick Ross and them have proclaimed themselves to be God. R. Kelly, who's trying to change his, his attitude, at one time in an interview, he said that he was the Pied Piper. <laughs> the Pied Piper was a man who played a flute and led the rats down to the water so that they can drown. And R. Kelly said, I'm the Pied Piper. <coughs> See, but there's something in what they're trying to tell you. So we have to be careful of that when we take in our ear. And that even go to the older generation, too. I just want to say, ain't no need of them fooling themselves, too. Some of the right. stuff that they listen to even Thank before you. you. Right. My generation, they used to say, if you want to ride, ride the white horse. <laughs> white horse is cocaine. Cocaine is right. <laughs> if we go back to generation before that, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> <laughs> That's talking about somebody cheating and <laughs> <in> their spouse. <laughs> so it's no different. Don't let them fool you. The stuff that we listen to and you listen to, a lot of that stuff has some messages in it that we know was wrong. No, it was wrong. Rick James was a pedophile. She was only 17. That's what he said. That's pedophilia. Okay, we fooling ourselves. Listen real good. <laughs> all right, go ahead. I'm done. Don't take all that stuff into your uh, spirit. Pastor <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marcus said, Rick James. Rick James made a song. Uh, Do you love me, Mary Jane? Mm -hmm. Rick, Mary Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and the scripture teaches us as believers that we have to guard our ears. And if we don't guard our ears and we listen to everything, it would it would start to shape and fashion our character. That's right. The Lord wants us to be uh, fashioned after Him. Yes, sir. We ought to be uh, molded and made in the image of God. Amen. And this is all the preachers be trying to do. You know, we trying to give you the word that will mold you, make you, and shape you. But the preacher cannot take the word and, and uh, make an application on you. Yes, your job. It's your job to make an application to apply this word to your life. And when you apply the word to your life, you will see there will be a change. And uh, <coughs> even David said it like this. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken for the wicked, nor a seed begging bread. And that's because David took a God at his word and he applied it to his life. Amen. So we have to learn to, to trust God. And David, yeah. even, David, even then, David had never seen God. David was still walking by faith. He trusted the Lord. And God blessed him. And you know, the scripture says that David was a man after his own heart. Amen. Does it mean that David had never done any wrong? No. But we quote more songs of David than we do anybody in the scripture. People get married, we start talking about songs of David. We go to the graveyard, we start quoting songs of David. Even sometimes we get up and uh, even in our devotional service, we open up to David and start reading one of the songs. You know, so God, God can use us, but uh, to our young people, I say again, God loves you. That's and, uh, uh, and a lot of times it seems like the preacher is the bad guy because the preacher is the one who's giving the word of what thus says the Lord. It's not that uh, nobody's pointing a finger at anyone. It's just that, uh, look, there's not a preacher on this panel that has not sinned. We all been done so wrong. <coughs> we all been we've been in the world too. Yes, we all we all been out there. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> so but we had to We would like to thank you, our viewing audience, and we would also like to thank Pastor Jones, yes. Sylvester Jones and Pastor Marshall, uh, part of our panel of uh, this pastors. Also, we'd like to thank our youth panel. Amen. Amen. Give yourselves a hand, youth panel. <laughs> we hope that there was something said. Uh, we hope there was a message conveyed that will enlighten you and encourage you, at our TV viewing audience, as well as our youth panel. There's a scripture I'd like to leave with you, and it's geared, it, I'd like to leave it uh, geared toward the young people today. Uh, Psalms 121, uh, 121st Psalms, it says, uh, 
And this is to the young folk. I look to the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I'm reading the teenager's uh, version of that uh, song. He will not let you be defeated. He will guard you and because he never sleeps. He will guard Israel because he never sleeps. The Lord will guard you, young people. The Lord is the shade that protects you from the sun. The sun not, cannot hurt you uh, during the day, and the moon cannot hurt you at night. For the Lord will be your protector from all dangers. God will guard your life. The Lord will guard you as you come. He will guard you as you go, both now and forevermore. It is our prayer here at Pastors United that God will continue to go with our young people and enlighten them to his word, to his will, and to his way. And until we meet again, thank you, our TV viewing audience. Thank you for tuning in to Pastors United. May God continue to bless you and keep you is our prayer. Amen. Amen.